Good morning, friends. Uh, I'm David Hope Jones, Chief Executive of the South of Scotland Destination Alliance. It's always my favourite part of a meeting like this when you see lots of friendly uh, names pop up and, and faces behind them as well. Thanks ever so much for getting up an hour of your time this morning to join our 60 minute webinar looking at our upcoming seasonality campaign. Um, the I suppose the purpose of, of this morning, from my perspective, is to brief you on, on what plans we have coming up, um, but most importantly, really to listen to, to your views about that. So uh, it's going to be a double act between um, Vanessa, our marketing manager, and myself. I'll give maybe five minutes of a sort of contextual uh, briefing at the start, and then uh, Vanessa will come in with, with 15 minutes of the, of the substance uh, of it. Um, there'll be time for a QA and a uh, with Vanessa for you to ask questions of Vanessa, and then it'll be back to me to facilitate probably 15 minutes or so of um, uh, your input um, to, to that campaign, and then a final 10 minutes with Vanessa for her to ask any final questions or, or follow up on anything that she thinks she needs to, to be able to go away from today to deliver that campaign. Um, boring housekeeping falls to, falls to me, usual stuff, uh, microphones off unless you want to, microphones on if you do want to talk, uh, video, uh, when you get to the sort of discussion bit, great to have uh, videos on if you're happy to, and the meeting is being recorded and probably will be made publicly available, so now is not the time to be giving away any state secrets. It, um, a little bit of context for what we want to do and why. Obviously, South Scotland Destination Alliance, an integral part of, of what we exist to do is to market the, the South of Scotland, to be able to bring uh, new, more, better visitors in, to be able to support the visitor economy and businesses. Since I started earlier on this year, one of the things that I've heard from a great many businesses, not all, but a great many, is that seasonality is, is a really big challenge. And some of you will have heard me at Parrot before, uh, uh, a quote that's really stuck with me. Um, business is saying that, David, we've got a thriving business for eight weeks a year, and then the kids go back to school. And the shoulder season of the autumn and the spring is really difficult. And the winter, it, for many businesses, is just prohibitive. And I recognise that this autumn is, is particularly challenging with both uh, continued high energy costs, um, some relief, but, but not significant, but also um, short-term lets a significant challenge and a significant cost for a great many businesses and uh, members. And I suppose for those reasons, it, it's very high in my mind. And I'm very keen to focus the majority of our marketing spend in this financial year, specifically to look at that question of seasonality. How are we useful for businesses and for the visitor economy through those more difficult months? Through the summer, uh, we used our marketing budget, a, a reasonable amount of it, to support a number of the sort of cycling and the active uh, pursuits opportunities that were there, really trying to, again, in as business-led way as possible, uh, to, to, to ensure that we were um, capitalizing on the opportunities there and building lasting legacies. Um, so what we what we're gonna what we're gonna do today is I said Vanessa is gonna talk you through a little little bit about about our campaign. I'm very keen to, to hear from you. Um, many of you will have been at one of our twenty seven meetings that we've had over the last couple of months, half in person, half digital. Um, a significant part of the reason that we had those meetings was the development of the responsible tourism strategy for the south of Scotland. The formal consultation of that. But we also use the opportunity of bringing together businesses and organizations and, and community-led enterprises to ask them the key questions around seasonality. Um, so I'm keen, I might just do a quick screen share to show you, if I may, two seconds. Uh, if you go to our go to our website uh, and you go to the locally led destination development section hopefully this pops up on your screens you can see uh, each of those 14 meetings and i know many of you will have been to at least one of these uh, and you can click through and see for example in gala shields you can see all of the notes from that if you click uh, this link here you can see the full mentee data uh, from everyone in the first hour but specifically if you scroll down you can see the input that we've had on extending the season you can see the local input the answers to the questions around what can we do to support businesses in this area through those quieter months. Anecdotally, you can also, if you scroll down, you can see the word clouds from each of those events. This is the uh, sort of meta word cloud across all of the event, 1800 submissions of, of how do businesses and communities want the South of Scotland represented by the SSDA. And you can see for each of the different parts of the region, uh, a disaggregation. So in Gala Shields, history, history and historic and heritage was key. In Loch Ken, you can see biodiversity and nature. In uh, Annan and Estale, more about food and drink and restaurants. 
And so I suppose the key point I want to make there is all of that has fed into our thinking so far. Um, but what we want to do is to say, look, this is what we're thinking of doing right now. Really value your input to it. And so not wanting to blether on anymore, I'm going to uh, pass over to Vanessa for the, for the meat of the meeting for a 15 minute briefing on what we're thinking. Q&A with Vanessa, and then it'll be back to me to hear more of your input. Thanks very much. And Vanessa, over to you. Thanks so much, David. Thanks for, for the introduction and good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely delighted to see so many of you signed up for today's webinar. I'm just going to share my screen so we can get started, get right into it. As David has mentioned, we have already received so much fantastic feedback and input from businesses right across the south of Scotland in terms of how do we want to promote the region, how do we want to be seen by potential visitors um, now and into the future. And one of the big things that we have wanted to focus on this year and going forwards is how do we showcase the south of Scotland as a place that's not just great to visit in the summer, but that's actually great to visit year round. So even though we say this is our seasonality marketing campaign, what we actually mean by that is how do we showcase that whether you're visiting in the spring, summer, autumn or winter, there is always something here for you that means that you're going to have a fantastic experience. So as you will remember, Scotland starts here. It's our face to the world. It's our marketing platform that we use to promote ourselves to potential visitors and to consumers, uh, whether they're in Scotland, Scotland, the UK or further afield. Um, we've got our website, scotlandstartsier.com. We have our app, uh, Scotland Starts Here, and we've got our social channels at Discover South Scotland, which I'm, I know many of you are already engaging with as well. A quick reminder in terms of what our goal is, you know, the South of Scotland has always been a bit overlooked. People have often traveled through it on their way further north. So we want to make sure that the region becomes the go-to place, really a year-round destination uh, that is forward-looking and built on the values and needs of its businesses and communities. And that's where you all come in. That's where your input is required. We want to make sure that we represent the destination not just as what we want it to be, but also as what we know it already is, and it already is a fantastic place. So our objective for this seasonality campaign is we want to establish the South of Scotland as a year-round visitor destination of choice, and we want to highlight the uniqueness of each season. So what action do we want to take? We want On Scotland Starts here on our website to develop an overarching seasons page that then has a dedicated landing page for winter, spring, summer and autumn and showcases some of the highlights that we know we can offer to visitors during each of those seasons and then build a promotional campaign around the initial two seasons that we've got coming up, which is winter and then spring. You might remember last year we did a winter starts here campaign, really highlighting what's happening during the winter months in the south of Scotland, uh, whereby we wanted to inspire visitors by showcasing some of the seasonal experiences, uh, specifically focusing on food and drink and some of our incredible stays. So we also had a landing page, we developed blog content, event highlights, uh, it included paid social media and some targeted press and PR activity. The results were really fantastic. We reached um, over 380,000 people in our key target markets, which was three to four hours drive time um, of our audience of metropolitan adventurers. So people based in urban centers who are really keen to explore further, explore rural destinations and really get away from it all. Our main focus was to generate clicks to the website and onward clicks to business websites. So all businesses that are listed on Scotland Starts here, we wanted them to really take the spotlight and get as much attention as possible. We did have some learnings from this campaign. So though it was really wonderfully successful, um, some of the feedback from businesses, from people on the ground was, while it was fantastic to highlight everything that's going on in the winter months, those aren't the only months we should be highlighting. And there are still a lot of business closures, especially um, a lot of attractions are shut for the season. And so visitors might find it a bit more difficult to find what's, what's available and what's going on. So we wanted to take all of this on board. 
Your feedback was also gathered, as David has mentioned, at the locally led destination development sessions, in online sessions and through our survey, and some of the outcomes I have collated, um, all of the fantastic comments that were made during, during those sessions, and there were some common themes right across the borders and Dumfries and Galloway. So thank you all so much for, for your comments there. Some of the common threads that came out of that was, of course, the mention of dark skies at this time of year, um, the desire to highlight seasonal activities like skating and curling. We do have quite a bit of heritage surrounding curling. We've got some fantastic curling rinks in the region as well. The desire to highlight seasonal local events and overall put a bigger spotlight on a lot of the events that are happening, whether that is Christmas lights, whether that is Christmas markets, whether that is um, walking festivals or uh, some nighttime experiences around the dark skies. There was also the wish to talk a bit more about how wonderful our scenery looks during the winter months and that actually while we might not get completely snowed in as some parts in, in the far north of Scotland, that is actually really fantastic. We do still have these accessible landscapes that can be explored, stunning scenery, and of course, wildlife that can be spotted. There was also a big wish that we would showcase more opportunities to immerse yourself in the community. Some of the some of the comments that were repeated again and again was, you know, we have these local festivals, we've got traditional festivals, we've got music festivals, we've got these things that people can really participate in, that people can really enjoy. But we also have food and drink and this general feeling of coziness that people could really immerse themselves in. And that's something that we haven't highlighted as much in the past. So could we please do something about that? And also, again, accessibility and the opportunity to escape and really recharge in nature um, and in our fantastic landscapes, small communities, and just receive a really warm welcome. So those were some of the comments that we got from you. And that's what we really want to integrate into this upcoming campaign, specifically for the winter months. So what are our actions and our activity plan and our timeline just based around those items? We sat down with all of our key partners and one of the opportunities that actually came up, the first action that we're going to take is we are collaborating with Visit Scotland on their late autumn campaign with DFDS Ferries. One of the things that has also come up in the meetings and in your comments was that you are quite keen to attract further markets that you want to start talking to those further afield again um, and also that you want to make sure that people don't just pass through the south of Scotland, but actually spend some time here. So Visit Scotland will be running an autumn campaign with GFDS ferries into Newcastle to promote touring holidays to some of our close neighbours in um, Germany and also in the Netherlands. We have decided we really want to target the German market. Our research has shown that is one of the markets we're already quite strongly represented in. And it's to inspire immediate and long term inspiration um, and visits for those key audiences who are planning to come across either in the next few weeks or in the next few months or even next year to really explore everything that this um, entirety of Scotland and of course the south of Scotland has to offer. That campaign is going live mid-October and will run until the end of that month which then of course informs our timings for our seasonality campaign to really develop our content on Scotland starts here. So that means we want to initially focus on the winter and spring months in the south of Scotland to promote those seasonal stays and short trips with a look ahead for summer at the end of the campaign to make sure that we really get set up for all four seasons. So autumn will be developed at the very end of that and have something that we can always reach out to our key audiences with. Once again, our target audience will be metropolitan adventurers, people based in urban centers who are looking to explore somewhere new, who are looking to escape the hustle and bustle, and who really want to rest and recharge in new surroundings and are really quite open to taking in lots of experiences and activities. We're looking at attracting people with up to three hours drive time. Um, and our runtime will be from late October, so roughly when the Visit Scotland campaign finishes to mid-March. That means we really have that opportunity to not just have 
um, really the winter month, as I mentioned, but to go right into spring and also the key booking seasons for the summer months that are then coming up. We really want to work with businesses, with everybody who's with us today, to identify some of the key seasonal highlights right across the region to make sure that everything that we share on Scotland starts here, whether that's on the website, blog content, press items, um, or our social media, that that is really representative of everything that is on offer in the region and gives some really fantastic ideas to those prospective travellers. So as mentioned, we've already identified, thanks to your help, some of those themes, but we really want to check in with you today if there's anything that we've missed, if there's anything that we need to add in, or perhaps um, if you've got additional ideas looking further ahead into the future. So some of the key themes that we will be focusing on, again, will be dark skies. We're going to make mentions of food and drink, whether that is a whiskey while you're sitting by a cozy fire, a locally brewed beer with friends in a really nice country pub, whether it's experiences of watching our wildlife, exploring some of our landscapes and scenery, taking in some of our new seasonal events, and of course, taking part in some of the fantastic activities that we've got to offer. In terms of the activity plan, we actually have quite a lot of opportunities for all of you to get involved. And we are really keen for businesses to be part of this and to say where they want to see themselves represented. As part of our activities and implementation of the seasonality campaign, we want to capture some new photo and potentially video content to really capture people in seasonal settings. While in the past, we've been really fantastically lucky to capture some seasonal landscapes. What we now want to show is people enjoying those landscapes, enjoying those businesses, enjoying those activities while they're out and about in their woolly hats and warm coats. In terms of website content, as already mentioned, we will have one big landing page co covering all four seasons and then four smaller sub pages, one for each season with main highlights. There will be blog posts featured on all of the relevant themes, whether that is where to go for the best dark sky experiences, where to get some of the best winter scenery, uh, winter scenic views and walks, or whether that is where to grab a really um, cozy cozy stay uh, during the winter months so again really keen to work with businesses on what your highlights what your offers are what your packages might be in the next few months that we can use to create that content we will also be creating newsletters to push to existing audiences and grow those further with additional assets there will be some new creative content developed as well that we're going to be sharing with all of the businesses that want to participate so that you can shout really loudly on your own social channels and websites as well. There will be, of course, paid digital activity on Facebook and Instagram to target our chosen audiences in all of the appropriate geographical areas. And what we would also really like to try uh, this year for the first time is looking at a short break competition to work with some of the business in the region to encourage people to either subscribe uh, to our newsletter, be part of the social media conversations or some other activity and then be in with a chance to win an off season or shoulder season stay in the south of Scotland. We will also be looking at PR and blogger activity to align with all of the campaign messaging and work with you all on where the priorities lie for that. In terms of the next steps, we really want you to get involved. First of all, we're looking for your input and David will facilitate that in the next few minutes. We are also looking for businesses and volunteers to support our seasonal photo shoots. So whether you want to be in front of the camera or whether you want to make your business premises available for some of the shoots, we'd really love to hear from you and work with, uh, with some of you to create that. We also really need to know about any event and festival highlights that are coming up, making sure that we've got awareness, that we've got them covered on scotlandstartsyear.com. Make sure you tell us about any seasonal experiences, offers and collaborations that you're gonna have going on, whether that is that your community group has gotten together and uh, you're making sure that there is one open restaurant each day of the week. There's always something on offer for visitors no matter when they arrive please let us know. That is all content that we can use and that we can then communicate to our key contacts. We'll also be looking for prizes for our short break competition 
and of course your press releases and news so that we can integrate that into all of our plans. One of the things we will be developing over the next few weeks is a campaign toolkit that will go out to all of the uh, all of the businesses, all of the SSDA members um, to find out how exactly they can get involved, what type of social media messaging they could utilize and just remind everyone of the timelines and where to find additional information. So this already brings us to um, the end of the overview, but if you've got any questions just now, uh, I would really welcome you to put your hand up and um, let me know your questions. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen to make this a bit easier for all of us. Well, if everybody's really happy then, oh, Adrian, did you have a question? Sorry. Please, you yes. mentioned Vanessa about the <clears throat> attractions that sort of mm -hmm. tend to wind down September, October time. Yeah. Which does feel to be sort of quite a big draw yeah. and very little from a business perspective to encourage them to keep open. It's not a good time. Visitor numbers are down. Everybody can understand why they shut. If they are going to continue to shut, how do we attract? How do we attract? Um, I think there's a few opportunities. Some of the attractions have already extended their opening times. So we have heard from some of them that will be staying open from, I believe, Croig Multiverse. They are open year round. Uh, we've got some of the local museums. So what we want to do is we want to develop some content that very explicitly says, here are some must-see indoor attractions, some must-see outdoor attractions during the winter months, something that's really quite easy for business to share as well on their own social channels to say, this place right here, right next door or 20 minutes down the road is open, is available. And hopefully that will then within time also inspire others to either have a slightly earlier reopening or maybe uh, if there is a special event going on, um, some attractions also have special opening hours just around Christmas time, which are certainly worth promoting as well. Um, but that is also actually, you're bringing up a really good point because that is also the reason why we want to extend this. We don't just want this to be about winter and then say, come here in the winter time and that's it. Uh, actually it's come in the winter, come in the spring, of course come in the summer, but also in the autumn because there is something available in each of those seasons. And people might say, oh yes, winter isn't quite the right time for me, but March, that looks great, which obviously is when everybody's gearing up to reopen again and getting that message already into people's heads. There is something available in the South of Scotland every month of the year. Even if I just go for a day out walking in the winter landscapes, and then I return back to uh, living in, in Ayrshire, in Glasgow, in Edinburgh, in Carlisle, we have still managed to get these people to come in and to experience some of our fantastic offering. Does that answer your question? Was that helpful? To a degree, Vanessa, yes. And I think it I think the the idea of very specific marketing of winter opening hours mm -hmm. is a good idea because it does prove that things are open. Yes. Hi Vanessa. Hello. I'm sitting, John Galloway from the, the owner of the Estale Hotel, sitting with me here, and he has a question. Um, it was you. specifically in relation to some of the, the slides there where it shows about um, the promotions that you're targeting the DFDS um, business with, and how would businesses that, that, for example, want to become involved with those promotions how would they make that contact and, and you know, like where would we receive information specifically about that? Because I would be very interested in that because we already get um, a considerable amount of business from them through the summer months. Mm -hmm. Yes. So this is the very first time actually that we're working with Visit Scotland on one of their collaborative campaigns. So we're very excited to trial this and see what the success rate is for us. But as you say, John, we know quite a few of the business already get quite a lot of business through DFES and through the, through the ferries coming into Newcastle. This is very much a campaign that DMOs were able to get involved in. So it's a wider promotional aspect of the destination. Um, essentially having Visit Scotland 
in its entirety at the top and then visit smaller parts of Scotland as in the south of Scotland. So we will be feeding back throughout the runtime of the Visit Scotland campaign on how it's going. If there are additional opportunities that do arise in terms of highlighting, we will absolutely reach out. But the understanding at the moment is that there will be a landing page about the entirety of the south of Scotland, pointing back to Scotland starts here um, and pointing back to some of the content we have, content that Visit Scotland have. So promoting really, um, the entire notion of the south of Scotland as opposed to specific businesses at this point. However, I've already had a chat with David and we are quite keen if this campaign sees the success that we're really hoping it will, that there will be opportunities for us in the future to uh, work more closely with DFDS and with other ferry services coming um, into either the north of England or the south of Scotland directly. So we'll keep you updated on that if that's all right. Okay. Thank you. Did I spot another hand somewhere? I don't think so. In that case, I will hand over to David for um, the mentee session. Really keen to get everybody's input. Uh, so thanks, David. Thanks so much, uh, Vanessa, and thanks for the good good questions. Um, again, since I started uh, earlier on this year, a real priority for me is to be as member led as possible. You know, our mission to drive responsible, sustainable visitor economy growth in the south of Scotland is a, is a shared one. Um, and for me, success is ensuring that that we never have a campaign that is a surprise to anyone that's interested in it, that we are always proactive and saying, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Would this be useful? Do you want to be involved? Do you want to feed in? And that's what today's session is, is all about. I also want to emphasize uh, the point around almost like sort of the strategic uh, pincer movement, uh, as it were, that we can achieve so much through a marketing campaign. But no one, even if we had 10 times the budget that we do, is going to sort of solve the challenge of seasonality through a marketing campaign alone, because there's no point bringing in 20,000 extra people to Newton Stewart in a, in, a, in a February weekend if there isn't actual activities for them to do, if there isn't product for them at that, uh, at that place at that time. And that's why these conversations are so important, that we need to make sure our marketing is really directing to places where there is that product, where there is that, that appetite. And, and, and that's why I'm so grateful for you, for you being here. And I suppose I just want to quickly come back on Adrian's question with a very honest answer, which is it's really hard it's a difficult nut to crack and it's not going to be quick and it's not going to be easy. We're not going to be able to instantly persuade, you know, big attractions to be able to stay open through the winter. But I think we can make in incremental progress by working together. And I think you're absolutely right by sharing information about what is open at this time, ensuring we're not giving information about things that aren't open, which can be really toxic for people to see, ah, oh, this is what I could have won. You know, if only this had been open sort of thing, ensuring that we're connected up and that we're selling those those assets that we've got that really deliver in the winter, in the autumn, in the spring, really, really well. That's where we can have progress. Speak to Paxton House, their cafe being open through the winter. How do we get in behind those businesses that are choosing to be open a bit later? We're not going to persuade everyone to doing it. We're not expecting everyone to do it. But how do we use that marketing budget for maximum impact? by driving um, the, uh, the, the, the the extending the season. Um, so what I'm gonna do is do a quick screen share. I'm gonna use Menti, probably most of you, but not all of you have used this with us before. It's a digital um, tool. The reason uh, that I think it's very useful is we've got 31 people on the line. We've got about um, 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes for this segment. Uh, and I wanna to listen to more than three or four people. I wanna ensure everyone on this line has an equal vote. So the way we're going to do it is Menti. Hopefully this will pop up on your screen. What I would like you to do is to either open a new browser. Um, so stay in the Zoom meeting, but open a new browser, menti.com, and enter this seven digit number. That is 35827200. Alternatively, if that doesn't work for you and you want to do it on your telephone, just scan the QR code on the right hand side of the screen. You don't need to enter any numbers if you do that. So I'm going to test the first question. And this is just where are you based? If you just put in a word in the box, where are you based and press submit and you'll see how the technology works. If any of you have been to any of our in-person meetings, you'll have a sense of it. Um, what we can see, every word that you submit, everyone can see straight away, but they can't see who said what. Um, we've got uh, 11 responses so far. 
Um, so I'm going to give it a little second for you to see where are people. So we've got Coldstream, Dun uh, Dumfries, Moffat, Kubri, Kelso, Peebles, Melrose, Edinburgh, Selkirk, Selkirk, Edinburgh, uh, South Scotland, Dumfries, Kelso, Kelso. Got 16 or so at the moment, 17 responses there. Thornhill, Kelso. Just going to give it another minute before we come to our first substantive question. Again, if anyone has any tech issues, just unmute and uh, tell me about them and I will do everything I can to try and resolve them. Again, if you have any problems at all, you just go to the same menti.com and enter that uh, those digits at the top of your screen. We've got 18 submissions so far. I'm going to go to the first question, um, and that is, what do you think of the SSDA's draft plan uh, for its coming sustainability campaign? So as much as you know now what you've heard uh, Vanessa talk about, me bang on about, which of these four answers best describes your uh, opinion right now? Uh, either brilliant, I really support it, or well, I'm broadly supportive, but there's things I'd like to change, or I'm not sure yet, or I'm opposed to this plan. And as you can see, your results are seen by uh, everyone there. And this just allows us to take a snapshot of what you're, what you're thinking at the moment is. We've had eight responses so far. And again, the advantage of this technology is it's just really, really democratic. It's really open. It's really transparent. And it gives everyone the same amount of voice. We've got nine votes so far, 10 votes in so just another 20 seconds or so, and we can see um, so far uh, that the leading is broadly supportive, but things I'd like to change. Uh, four people, five people saying, I'm not sure yet. Uh, two people, brilliant, yeah, I'm totally supportive of it. Uh, no one's yet said, I'm totally opposed to this as a plan. 14 people have voted so far. Again, if you have a tech problem, you can just unmute um, and, uh, and say, if it's not working for you, if it's really not working, just put it in the chat box of Zoom. So I'm going to uh, move to the next slide and ask, um, what do you like most about the proposed campaign? Um, so most people are of the view, yeah, I'm broadly supportive, but there's some things I'd like to change. What What do you like most about the proposed campaign? If you could write a, uh, a short answer there um, and press submit, and we'll see what everyone feels like. Okay. Um, keep typing. I'm going to start reading out what people have said so far, uh, and then we're going to move to another question. So what do you like most about the proposed campaign? What we've heard so far is right target audience for the best conversion, working collectively to increase the season, targeted attractions, focus on seasonality is good. Uh, someone very honest that they missed the first uh, 20 minutes, minutes. Uh, the cohesive agenda, promotes that we're still open for business throughout the year and fun to be had in not just the summer, uh, working collaboration with Visit Scotland and targeted DFDS, engaging local businesses and communities in developing the plan, uh, 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 great general overview, great uh, general overview of the entire south of Scotland, the spotlight on the region, uh, inclusive and year round focus, different targeting uh, new markets who have disposable income, aiming to keep businesses open all year round for as long as possible to benefit the local people too. a collaborative strategy and good that it's not just focusing on winter, but beyond that's really useful 16 submissions there. Um, and I suppose the flip side of that that question is. What would you like to add or, or change about about the campaign? And again, I've, I've I've not I've intentionally not framed it as what do you dislike about it? So I really want to put it as what would you what would you change about it? You know, how do you uh, if there's something you don't like, what would you what would you change? So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes uh, to write an answer there, and really interested to see your views to that question. You keep typing and, and submitting your answers, but I'll begin to read out and maybe just briefly uh, respond to some of the, the points that are there. Um, a few people have said, just need to know a bit more before I really can comment, and that's entirely understandable. Um, there's a comment here, really good one, perhaps start a little bit earlier, and, and absolutely, I'm keen to reassure on that. The, the nature of the timescales that were slightly imposed on us with the consultation for the development of the strategy meant that we had to be having these meetings regrettably through uh, August and September. I really wanted to use those meetings to ask businesses and communities and community groups what they what they wanted from this campaign. And that's meant that it's pushed the start date back a bit. But strategically, we look to offset that by having the DFDS campaign with Visit Scotland uh, which is sort of plug and play, it's ready to go, that that's the sort of autumn element to this while we had this consultation to focus on winter and spring, but completely agree that starting earlier in future years. We're sure that summer activity will be promoted after this campaign finishes. Absolutely. This is just this campaign right now um, from the uh, end of March, new financial year, new budget, new campaigns. And the next question we'll be asking about how you want that balance. Um, reassurance that it's it's not just exclusively winter winter exclusive activities, but summer activities that can also be done in winter. Great point, and we'll make sure that we we capture that. 
uh, need to ensure that attractions and food and drink etc are open otherwise will deter visitors coming absolutely really critical point we need to have the right relationships with our members with businesses to understand who's open and when focus on storytelling end to end to create inspirational content great point are there targeted google ads to complement the facebook and instagram adverts i'll maybe ask vanessa to come back to that towards the end of this meeting Focus on conversations to a conversion to businesses. Great point. And again, maybe Vanessa, if you can come back on, on that. Ensure expectations are managed to avoid disappointment, e.g. being clear uh, about what's open and what's not. Also make sure that local jobs and recruitment are included in the plan as well. Absolutely. Getting that good information is key. Know where and how businesses and communities can feed in content, images, updates, offers. Great point. Uh, earlier planning for maximum input. Yep. Completely agree. Businesses may be willing to try to extend opening if they know dedicated campaigns are underway. The collaborative approach is good. Make sure it's in it is constantly evolving communication and update of information. So not just the end of the webinar, but keeping you updated. Absolutely really happy to commit to that. And conversion uh, again, that point, which would be great if Vanessa could come back to. This question um allows you to um uh, divide up how much of our time and energy and budget do you think should be spent on promoting the different seasons um, between zero and 100%. Uh, if you try and broadly make sure it adds up. So if you think we should be focusing equally on all four seasons, you should be able to slide along uh, each of those to about 25%. Again, if you could try and make sure that it roughly adds up. And once you've done it, if you press submit, if anyone has any tech challenges, just unmute. Um, Adrian Clarkson, sorry, I think we've got on, on the Zoom setting where you're able to draw on the screen, which is always a dangerous thing. I think you might have accidentally pressed the button uh, for uh, annotate on the screen. If you're able to, uh, Adrian Clark, um, uh, unpress that button, that would be that would be great. Can I give you a minute or two to feed in your views? And this, I suppose, comes back to that question of reassurance that we're not going to sort of stop promoting summer. Absolutely. And I really want to ask that question. If it was your budget, how would you how would you divide it up? That's 17 submissions so far. Uh, just last 30 seconds on this question. What we can see is that there's a consensus in this meeting that uh, we should be advertising the region in all four regions, but that we should be spending a bit more in winter and a bit less in summer with broadly 25 percent each for the shoulder seasons of spring and, and autumn. So that's a really, really useful bit of, of feedback. And I've got to say, that's probably broadly what we're what we're thinking of as well. Um, quick question: We're going to ask this for winter and for uh, for spring as well. What do you think of the South Scotland's best offerings? What's our USP? You know, if you're just going to say a uh, couple of words, what what is it? I don't want to give examples. I don't want to put ideas in your head. Um, but uh, just really quickly, what do you think is the main USP that we should be promoting for winter? And the next slide is going to ask the same thing for spring let's start reading out what we've got so far so accessible breaks outdoor activities food and nature easily accessible countryside breaks uh, relax and get away from it all the outdoors walking cycling countryside wildlife views scenery accessible to all cozy accommodation great outdoors and accompanying business so food and drink and accommodation accessible breaks scenery outdoors activities a rural escape close to uh, uh, urban centers uh, can get outside do things uh, less extreme weather than uh, up north, great point. Scenery and dark skies, food and nature, outdoor pursuits, small independent businesses with unique products, small towns and community tourism, dark skies again, um, just last 30 seconds. And then I'm going to ask the same question for uh, spring as well. I mean, really, really good points there. And I think the the proximity bit is is really is really important. You know, how do we get to those urban centres within a few hours drive to say that there's a brilliant uh, winter experience that you can have. Other points come in. Dark Skies has come in three times. Dog friendly, outdoors accessible to the Central Belt, Newcastle, uh, and darkness experiences. So I said, same question again, but this time for spring. What do you think should be our key messaging? What do you think the USPs for springtime we should really be, be pushing? So submissions so far, outdoor activities, walking holidays, wide open spaces, dark skies, again, still got dark skies uh, in the spring, uh, early spring, agritourism experiences, including lambing, absolutely, uh, on the farm, lambing type offerings, uh, outdoor accommodation and food offerings, uh, open spaces, outdoor activities, scenery, nature, wildlife, cycling, wildlife and enjoying outdoors after a long winter break, a vibrant time of year, new beginnings, reasonably good weather, 
uh, hidden gems to stop potential visitors driving through, so much to do practically on your doorstep, agri and outdoors, outdoor activities, great towns, uh, agritourism, avoiding busyness of summer, uh, outdoors, nature, local business, businesses, seasonal products, all the beauty, wildlife and nature activities on the offer without the crowds at the other end uh, of other areas. Scenery experiences, outdoor activities, see new life emerging, uh, quiet roads, walking and free parking in most cases and the right to roam. The last question I'm going to ask is, is here. And this is, you fed into what this campaign should be. And this is in some ways the most important question. How do we engage you in the campaign and how do we make sure that you benefit from the campaign? The whole reason we're doing this is to support businesses, is to support the visitor economy. You fed into what we should be doing. And this is a really critical question for me. How can we ensure that you can be a part of that and that you really benefit from it? I'm just going to give you a couple of minutes, to, to, to a few minutes to think about this because it's a, a really key question. Um, so 11 responses so far, great toolkit. Um, so a toolkit for businesses to be able to use to engage the campaign and social media templates, absolutely. Um, totally commit to that. Let us know how to get involved in promo ops and photo shoots. Absolutely commit to that. Promote how much is being spent on the campaign. Very happy to say now uh, we've ring fenced the total of sixty thousand pounds. That's six zero sixty thousand pounds for this for this campaign. Loads of other stuff we're we're doing as as well, uh, but it's sixty thousand that we've uh, ring fenced for this campaign. Keen to be completely open and honest about that. Ask us uh, involves us to be a part of it. Absolutely, uh, showcase us, allow us to be a part of it, and immerse us in it. Completely agree. Happy to commit to that. Link us with other businesses to promote each other, get us involved in, in photos, linking businesses together. Brilliant idea. Absolutely. Um, get us involved in, in photos. Allow as much collaboration as possible. Absolutely agree. Promote business activity B2C. Talk to, yes, talk to people on the phone face to face to discuss the campaign, make it simple for people to share information. Great points. How best to promote our offerings to link into the campaign? Yep. Make it easy and clean and straightforward for businesses to keep you informed so you can share details to other businesses and consumers. Absolutely. Clear info on activity to enable accurate monitoring via analytics. Early communication, time measurable, regular campaign updates, what's open list available. Understanding that eyes are on the region as a whole, assets to help us join in the conversation, sharing local posts, collaboration, and the creation of packages across businesses to help the offering. Lead time for businesses to align and deliver unified messaging for the South. Yep. Promote directly the tourism industry, what businesses are being involved in with the campaign and what are the results that are there. Communication and follow up show clearly expectations of benefit. Um, promote businesses that are open all year round, giving uh, give people a seat at the table for decision making, encourage business collaboration, sharing information and collaboration. What's on in the region? will allow us to target marketing. Yay for collaboration. Absolutely, what a great way to finish. Uh, and help with creative, uh, creating package offerings involving two or more businesses. Yes, we will provide advice on that and cross business promotion. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing there. Um, thanks so much for, for, for taking part in that Menti. Some people love that technology, other people absolutely hate it. I hope that, uh, for, for, that you understand why it's attractive for us as an equitable way of listening to 30 people uh, uh, in the time that's available. What I'm going to do in a moment is pass over to Vanessa uh, for any questions that anyone's got uh, that you've thought of for Vanessa, but also for Vanessa through a last set of six, seven minutes of discussion to ask any questions of, of you that she wants to follow up on. And then I'll, I'll wrap up at the end and say a little bit about the next step. So Vanessa, over to you. Thanks, David. Uh, some really fantastic comments, I think, from, from the mentee and a few items that I actually wanted to follow up on as well. I think fantastic to see that a lot of the comments in terms of what you think is important for winter uh, really, um, again, mirror what we have heard from meetings in the past and what we've decided on for the campaign so far. So really glad that we seem to be on the right track uh, on, on that front already and really looking forward to working with everyone on that over the coming weeks. There was obviously the question there, will we also promote summer? Will we also promote the other seasons? And as David has said, absolutely. The point of starting this now is to make sure that we are set up to have uh, promotional materials at the ready for everybody, for all of the business in the South of Scotland, for every season in the year in the future. So if you turn around 
next year in winter, you will still have something to fall back on and say, oh, yes, of course, the SSDA through Scott and Starts here, they've already developed something. They're going to be updating that. There will be something there for to use for me. There's going to be something there for autumn. There is also going to be something there for summer if you say, oh, actually, you know, the winter time isn't quite the one for me for promotional activities. So we want to make sure that no matter what, what season it is, there is something that businesses can use uh, and that we can also use on our social channels to say, it's a great time to come and visit and to come and discover more of the south of Scotland. Also fantastic to get your input for spring. Something that we really want to do is to have follow up workshops and webinars with you in the coming months to have another session uh, once we're ready to start promoting spring to then also have a session for summer and of course next year to also have a session on autumn to just make sure that everything is really aligned with the thinking and the offering within the destination. Um, also, I really loved that people are really keen to link in with other businesses. And I think David, that's something that we will take away to talk to the team about as well. How can we facilitate that a bit more? There's only so much a marketing campaign can do in terms of communicating to the consumer but there is always that other aspect of how do we communicate internally in the destination? How do we communicate with one another? And that's certainly something we really want to enable. And I know, David, that's something that's been really close to obviously your agenda in, in the last few months with all of the in-person meetings, all of the online meetings, and we will keep doing that, of course. Uh, I do want to open it back up to any additional questions that might have come up now, um, anything that you might have realized while taking the menti questions oh yes i want to know a bit more about this or that so please feel free to just unmute yourselves put your hands up and ask away adam yes Hi, uh, you're right um i'm just wondering if um like for helping businesses stay open maybe like accommodation places could because we normally take bookings six to eight weeks in advance mm -hmm. we could kind of give an indication of what our occupancy levels are so that people know that in six to eight weeks, well, there's still a decent amount of tourism coming to the area. So that allows them to plan ahead as well. Um, I don't know if that's something that could be facilitated on, on a website somewhere just to see like what sort of levels that like people are expecting in the area. Yes, David, that might be something that you can um, jump in on as well. I know there was a lot of talk recently in terms of data sharing and how can we facilitate that locally. I think it's also really important, yeah, just that locally, local groups, local communities really feel empowered to share information with one another and to, yeah. as you say, Adam, to just say, actually, we've got a group of 20 coming in in, in three weeks' times, which cafes, which restaurants can yeah. be open in the evenings to make sure they can be served. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there have to, has to probably be two levels to that on a on a very local basis and also wider in the destination to assess how yeah. has winter been going, how has spring been going. So, but yeah, just just briefly on that, I think it's a really interesting idea, Adam. Um, as Vanessa says, it's a separate conversation we're having about data collaboration. Um, I'm. We had a big meeting on 24th of August, bringing together all the major players that collect data and, and the short version outcome of, of that was actually there is a huge amount of data that is collected, but it's just mm -hmm. not shared. It's not collated mm -hmm. and businesses aren't supported to be able to access that data and use it. So it's not driving decision making. Mm -hmm. So that's a big priority for me. And within the next four or five weeks or so, we're going to have web pages live on SSDA sharing all of that information. So for businesses right. to say that if you need this kind of information, this is where you can find this data, contact this person, you know, and here right. it is. Um, so that's that sort of sharing the historic data. Really interesting what you say, Adam, about sharing bookings data, forward-looking bookings data. And that's not part of the conversation we've had so far, but it's a really, really good question. I think probably in the first instance, because we've not been asked that very much by other people, it might yeah. be that local solutions are the best thing. Right, and what local. we're doing in some areas is literally helping groups create local WhatsApp groups of yeah. the businesses that yeah. then people who have that data are able to yeah. say, look, this is what things are looking like. Yeah. Um, uh, December's really, really busy. Um, these three weeks, if there's stuff open, that would be, be brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so perhaps Adam, if it's okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that offline, drop you an email and we'll have a proper yeah. chat to follow up about that. Yeah. 
Super, thank you. Great, thanks, Adam. I also just see a comment popping up from Lynn. Yeah, she was just saying, how can local businesses work together? And I think that's a really fantastic idea and something that came up in the Menti as well. Absolutely. Um, if if there are any local collaborations, local businesses banding together to, to put together an offer or to put together a highlight, let us know. Absolutely. We've got um, press contacts. We've got um, obviously opportunity to highlight items in, in blogs and on social media. One thing that I did notice in the Menti was people really wanted an easy way to reach out to us and say, yes, we've got something coming up. So David and I, we will take that away and see how we can perhaps implement that either through email or perhaps through the SSDA website, if there is an easy, easy submission function, we can perhaps um, create for everyone to just pop the information into, pop in an overview that comes straight through to our team that we can action. In the meantime, of course, we do have our, um, our all of our team members, Sarah and Gowan as well, who many of you will be familiar with. So please don't hesitate ever to, to reach out to any of us with any queries or any questions um, at all. Oh, fantastic. I see another question coming in from the chat from Liz. Yes, there will, um, you will require some help to identify who in the area is looking to collaborate. So I think, yeah, some local facilitation, if there's anything that we can do, we will have a look at that as well. Melanie, you've got your hand up. Morning, guys. Thanks so much for going through that. I've really enjoyed kind of getting the insights into kind of next steps and marketing. It's so interesting to see. Um, one thing I'd like to just mention from a business perspective is obviously I think it'd be really useful if we can actually keep an eye on um, our, our markets, our target markets and what's going on. Um, and if you can kind of feed back any trends that businesses can remain ag agile through the winter, I think it's still with with all of the legislation and things that's going on. I think it's really important that businesses are kind of kept, kept up to speed with the latest trends, what you, you guys and Visit Scotland are seeing in terms of obviously we've seen increasing last minute bookings and, you know, what that means for businesses having to stay a bit more agile and communicate with partner businesses while we're putting packages and things because I, I find in winter it's it's more about managing the guest experience and and developing that package so that it's a seamless experience for them where they've got a restaurant booking in advance and just communicating with guests really so that they can prepare and plan but I think actually feeding back uh, two businesses on what they're seeing in terms of latest trends and also how we can plan for next year is really important as well so feeding in you know maybe opportunities for uh, maximizing on early bookings for next year so some of those things would be really useful to add into the mix really good point there Mel especially on planning ahead for next year and I just want to raise that again as well. So yes, we said uh, obviously big focus just now on, on winter and spring and then adding in an outlook towards summer at the end of the campaign as well as we get to the end of our financial year and get ready for the next uh, big item. Because absolutely the start of, of each year, really important booking period for all of us, really the one period where we really want to reach as many prospective tourists and visitors as possible and inspire them to consider the south of Scotland for their big holiday of the year, as well as some of their short trips. So uh, yes, we will definitely take that into account and we'll also share any additional booking trends uh, that uh, become available and that we get knowledge of in the next few weeks. Thanks, Mel. All right, let's see if there's anything else. I should probably, I, I'll maybe, I'll maybe just bring us to a close. So I think yeah. we said we'd finish at, at at eleven, if that's if that's <laughs> okay, for, Vanessa. Um, Absolutely. The um, I ju I just want to say, uh, most importantly, thanks ever so much for for your input. You know, I I'm really keen that you've got a sense of our values as as an organisation. We want to be you know, working with you, listening to you. And from all of the comments and the feedback on Menti, collaboration is really valued and really welcomed. So we're not going anywhere at the end At the end of this. You've got our contact details. The SSDA is just a team of five people, five people working really hard to do whatever we can to support a, a huge uh, number of businesses across 1.12 million hectares of, of, of land. 
Vanessa's doing amazing jobs, not just on this campaign, but generally she's got this week uh, uh, journalists um, uh, walking across the region for The Guardian and the I newspaper. Next week, she's got journalists cycling across the region for the Cycling Weekly. The week after that, she's got journalists canoeing through the region again for the for the for the Guardian. And so it so it goes on. You know, this campaign is part of the work that the PR side is 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 part of the work, and the business engagement side and the travel trade is is part of our work. What I'm going to do is send you an email later on today following up. I'm going to give you links that if you want to put more data into that mentee, you can see it. I'm going to give you a read link so you can see everything that's been said on that mentee completely open completely transparent if you find it useful i suggest that we uh, i suggest that we have uh, meetings like this every six weeks or so but i'll ask you that question in my email does that sound about right to feedback what's happening and to make sure that this is really working for uh, you guys i'll ask for your feedback on this meeting whether you like me mentee or or, or don't like um mentee um and we will we will just keep going uh, with this campaign and with future campaigns, having meetings like this, asking your opinions, working together uh, and finding ways of building those collaborations. In February, we're going out again to all 14 areas for in-person meetings. I will, uh, I will be there in the room and I will stand up and I will talk about the campaign, sharing all of the numbers. And that's a great opportunity for, as so many people have said this morning, for, to bring businesses together and to build those collaborations, create those WhatsApp groups, whatever works locally we want to facilitate. So thanks ever so much for your time this morning. It is uh, the beginning uh, of the conversation and, and not the end. Uh, I'll send you an email. You can feed into us by just replying to that email. Uh, we are here to help and I really look forward to working together. But thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. You know, yeah. I'm from Kelso and we are very, very lucky that we got the race course. <clears throat> and the race course clearly is a winter race yeah. course. So we do have that advantage. Yeah, and I think it will be really good to work with with all the different communities like Visit Kelso, like yourselves, to say very explicitly, these places are open. Make sure you put them on your list over the next few months for a visit. Thanks so much, Adrian. Right, Sharon, I can see your hand is up as well. Go next. 